Sawatika. Back in June, I had the opportunity to travel to Thailand to see the factory where timeless trans corsets are made. They invited myself and Sarah, their administrator at headquarters in Austin, to come and help design their corset patterns and make them curvier and more comfortable to wear. And if all went well, I would also have the opportunity to create my own exclusive designs with them. The catch was I had less than a week to decide if I was going to go, so it was a very impromptu adventure. It took three flights and close to 32 hours total to get from Toronto to Bangkok, so the whole first day was pretty much spent sleeping. Then the next day it was right to work. We were there for 12 days total and spent every one of those days working in some facet or another, on average 10 to 12 hours a day. This is Jim and Black, they're married and they own the factory. Many of you who go to anime conventions may have already met Jim over the years. Not everyone who works in the factory actually lives there, but Jim and Black do, and Sarah and I also stayed there. It was a six-story building, with the first three stories for production, while the upper levels were available as living space. So we stayed in a roomy, air-conditioned space on the fourth floor, and they had western toilets, and our room had a beautiful view. We were offered a hotel nearby, but I really wanted to fully immerse myself into the whole experience. I'll talk more about the factory conditions in a little bit, but I really want to show you how we developed the corset patterns first. Our original plan was to rework the standard length underbusts only, and try to get to the other corset styles if we had extra time at the end. What we ended up doing in those 12 days was a complete overhaul of the three underbust corsets, the standard, the long line, and the cincher, and also testing out new overbust patterns and developing technically two new designs that will hopefully be out before the end of the year. So designing the standard length was an interesting process because we wanted to keep the soul of the corset, we wanted to keep its essence. We wanted to preserve the number of panels, the construction techniques, and the materials used uh, so that it would still be instantly recognizable as a timeless trans corset. And also, for instance, we couldn't change the length of the bones dramatically because they had like 10,000 bones in stock of each pre-cut length. So the factory had already tried a few different ways of modifying the corset patterns, but uh, the ones that we ended up deciding on was slashing and draping to get the new silhouette. We took one of the pre-existing underbusts and we cut into it in four panels on each side and relaced it crudely so that it fit us comfortably. Then, with Sarah wearing it, I taped over each modified panel and smacked it onto paper to get an idea of the general pattern we were looking at. The flat pattern pieces look really wobbly and wild, but over the course of several mock-up fittings, they were finessed into some elegant shapes. Thankfully, there were several people at the factory who all wore size 24, and we all had very different body types, so we had a good range of people to test out the same size. So that old standard underbust became this mock-up fitting, and finally this final product. And this old cincher became this cincher in the mock-up, and it became this final piece. And the long line went from this, to this, to this, and finally to this. We also tested the corsets in size 18 and also up to 32, 34, and 36 on various other people so we could see how the pattern grading worked for larger and smaller body types. I believe this model is wearing a size 34 corset and this one is a size 18. On one of the days, Miss Nam and Miss Bunny got to visit the factory and I've met them through a Penny Underbust, so they got to try on some corsets as well. So Miss Nam wears around a size 24 as well, so she got to try on the master samples and Miss Bunny wears a size 18, so this is what it looks like on her. So how long did it take to rework all the patterns? Well, each sample took about four hours for the factory to make, so on some days, if we were all working really efficiently, we could test two mock-ups in a day and make changes very quickly. We graded all the patterns from size 18 inches up to 42 inches, three different underbust cuts in 13 sizes each, grading all by hand. And doing these while working on other samples and fittings at the same time, and with only 12 days to do everything, this was why Sarah and I worked on average 10 to 12 hours a day. But again, that's not the normal working hours of the factory. Normal working hours were from 8am to 5pm, usually Monday to Saturday, and they have an hour break for lunch, which seemed to be pretty mandatory. If not factory enforced, then at least socially and culturally enforced. During that lunch hour, I saw people obviously eating, taking a nap in the shade, studying, reading, chatting on the phone with friends, but oh my god, Thailand loves to eat. No one ever missed a meal. 
Back to the factory. Before I came to Thailand, I was initially concerned about potential sweatshop conditions, which led to mild moral conflict of selling off-the-rack corsets on my own site. And I think that was another reason why Jim and Black invited us over to see what they were like. There were a total of 25 people at the factory, and that includes all the cutters, stitchers, packers, and executives. They refer to everyone as their co-workers as opposed to their employees, which I actually liked because that terminology implies that everyone is of equal value. They have a very low turnover for their co-workers. Most of them have been there for several years and are highly skilled and efficient at what they do. Minimum wage in Bangkok is 300 baht, or the equivalent of about 10 US dollars a day. The factory pays their co-workers more than minimum wage though, with raises based on how long they've been working there and how productive they are. Also, since there are so many computer and tech jobs opening up in Bangkok, people who are working in clothing manufacture kind of have to be paid well in order to maintain the incentive to work there. And the workers are definitely not locked into the buildings like you might have seen in other factories. If a co-worker wants to pick up an extra shift or work overtime, they have to ask in advance, and they're paid time and a half for their extra work. In the industrial area where we were staying, a one-person studio apartment would start at the equivalent of about 90 US dollars a month. Where we went out for lunch most days, a decent-sized meal converted to about $1.25. Tourism stuff was more expensive, obviously, as well as imported designer clothing in the big shopping malls. But Thai citizens get into the palace, the temples, and museums for free, so many of the tourism costs don't apply to them. Bangkok was a lot more developed and progressive than I was expecting it to be, which I realize might sound horribly ignorant on my part, but they have paid maternity leave, sick leave, universal health care. The unemployment rate in Bangkok is about half of 1%. It's certainly not perfect, you know, it's not paradise, but it's actually a lot better than I was expecting. So here's what the factory is like. This is Tao. She might look like she's 16, but she's actually 38, and she has a family and children of her own. Later on, you'll see someone who's 25 but looks 12, so I'll eat what they're eating. This is the cutting room. The lady doing the peace sign here, her name is Guy, and she's an amazing cook. She and Adam live in the room next to where Sarah and I were staying, and almost every night there was an absolute feast for dinner, unless we went out to a restaurant, in which case there was an absolute feast for dinner. Did I mention that they love to eat? Anyway, the pattern pieces are plastic sheets about uh, an eighth of an inch thick, so they're more hardy than cardstock and they don't get beat up so easily. They're traced with chalk onto this stack of fabric several layers high, and this material is fashion fabric that's already laminated to twill. Here you can see that they're changing the blades of the cutter. They use this industrial fabric cutter which is like a jigsaw that you can slide around. Those things are weights, so the fabric doesn't shift around. I think in the case of genuine leather, the hides are all different shapes and sizes, so those might be cut out individually. I saw them cutting out some panels with regular hand shears on another day. You might be asking, why not invest in a laser cutting machine? Because it would speed up the time for cutting, and at the same time, it would actually create more jobs since you're getting somebody to learn to operate the machine and train other people. And in the case of plastic mesh, which is becoming more and more popular these days for corsets, using a laser would also melt the edges as it cuts to help prevent the fabric from fraying so it doesn't get pokey or shred apart. The factory has looked into getting a laser cutter, but in cases like vinyl, plastic, vegan leather, etc., the toxic fumes from the burning synthetics are so deadly that a life expectancy is only one or two months if you're breathing that in 40 hours a week. I've been told that the turnover rate for laser cutter operators in other factories is very high because of this. And of course, not all workers know this coming in. Jim actually cares about his co-workers and there's a very low turnover rate in his factory, as I said before. So this industrial hand cutter is efficient enough for now. And obviously, if they do get a laser cutter in the future, it wouldn't be used on vinyl. Here's where some of the fabric stock is kept. That's Adam crouching down in that room. Just a quick peek here. Some of the fabrics in there are so gorgeous. Here's the sewing room. Some of them have an assembly line system going on, but some of them are working on custom pieces or samples or other projects. For instance, it was just one person who was making all of our mock-ups from start to finish, so it wouldn't disrupt the work of the other co-workers. That day, most of them were working on the Steampunk Armor Longline Corset, which is a textured gold vinyl, and they have swing hooks, and I'm really sad that I didn't get a video of these swing hooks being installed. 
Since they're sewing vinyl, which is not self-healing, they don't use pins when they're sewing, and they actually don't use pins ever, I don't think. All of the patterns are made with a half-inch seam allowance included. Sarah and I had to be so accurate to the millimeter, we had to make sure that every one of our pattern pieces in every size lined up properly and the seams were trued, and the seam allowances were exactly half an inch, because obviously in mass production, you can't be stopping to check why one panel might be slightly longer than some other panel, or why the waistline of one panel is like half a centimeter off. That kind of flub just can't happen to begin with. So every step has to be as perfectly precise as possible, from drafting to cutting to stitching. So of course it starts with a good corset pattern, and truing the seams for every size was my job and that was a little anxiety inducing. Here you can see they're putting in the bones. One of the things we did with the standard underbust pattern was make the center front length a little shorter, more rounded and less pointed. This was to help the busk and bones fill the length of the channels a little bit better. Since, as I mentioned before, they have thousands upon thousands of these length bones to use up, and we couldn't simply order longer bones to throw the old ones away. This is a gravity feed steam iron, there are a couple of them in the room. You can see that they also have a pressing cloth here. I remember my sewing teacher in high school telling me that pressing can be the difference between clothing looking simply homemade versus handmade. That's an air conditioning unit. It was very welcome. I am Canadian and not used to this tropical heat. This is the room where they install grommets, lace it up, and package up the corsets. They have a pneumatic grommet press here and it's pedal operated. You can see the laser crosshairs where they punch holes in the fabric. Then someone else puts in the top hat part, and then she goes over to the other machine and puts on the washer and presses it down. Here's the worker lacing up the side hip panels, and then it's packaged up and it's ready to be shipped. On the second last day that we were there, in the morning, Jim and Black took us to the market so that we could check out the fabric district and come out with some cool new fabrics and colors in addition to releasing the new cuts. But there were so many stores and thousands of volts of fabric and so many things to consider like fiber content, whether it would hold up to the fusing process, cost breakdown per corset, whether the same fabric could ever be ordered again so it's not just a seasonal or limited edition design, there's so many issues. It's definitely not a case of arbitrarily picking out something pretty and poof, magical corset design. That afternoon, Sarah and I went to see the royal palace and the neighboring temples, and you saw a little bit of that footage at the beginning of this video. That building is covered in 100% real gold leaf, by the way. And we rode in a tuk-tuk, which is like a three-wheeled motorized rickshaw that goes very fast and has no seatbelts, and it was exhilarating in a sort of terrifying roller coaster kind of way, but that might have just been that specific driver. I really wanted to get the pattern grading finished before we left Thailand though, so we didn't do too much adventuring that day. I believe we went back to do some work in the evening. Even on the very last night, as we were having our goodbye dinner and celebrating Sarah's birthday, after celebrations and packing, we were literally putting the final touches on the very last graded pattern as the taxi pulled up to take us to the airport. So this was my Thailand adventure. If you want to know anything else about the new corset designs, our stay in the factory, the type of food we ate, anything, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.